Artificial intelligence. It means different things to different people. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Um, what should we be thinking of when we hear the words in artificial intelligence? Mm. Artificial intelligence, as you say, is a term that is widely used these days uh, to cover a number of developments in the technological field. Uh, often it is referred to as machine learning, that is to say machines taking over from human beings and developing their own way of processing and their own uh, matters, capacity to think. And their own capacity to think. So there is an uh, evolution in the machines. Uh, the most recent development, uh, and that actually is, is fairly new, is what is called deep learning, that uh, the machines are programmed to learn themselves, mm. uh, but afterwards what they come up with cannot be uh, traced backwards. You can't do reverse engineering. The programmers do not understand how a machine uh, developed by a company uh, was able to beat the world champion at Go. They set up the machine, but the machine then developed its own reasoning. Uh, that is, this whole field is nowadays uh, termed as artificial intelligence uh, and we find it in all aspects of society. The Council of Europe is concerned with human rights, democracy, right. rule of law, legal standards. Why is artificial intelligence something that we are now taking an interest in? The is it a new interest or is it something that we have been following over the years? We've been following in technological developments over the years and why have we done so? Because as you mentioned, we were set up to defend human rights, uh, uh, democracy and rule of law, uh, and the values that underlie these concepts. We're an organisation of values. To give you an example, when the sheep Dolly was cloned, the Council of Europe was the first organisation and the only one to react with a legal standard to promote biomedicine, biomedical med research, but to draw red lines and mm -hmm. to say we're not going to clone human beings. And with artificial intelligence, uh, I think it's very much the same thing. It will bring fantastic benefits for mankind, humankind. Uh, we will be able to cure diseases. We'll understand more about the universe. We will be able to make our societies probably juster. We'll have safer roads, all sorts of advantages. But as with all technology, there is also a real risk of abuse. And that the Council of Europe uh, was set up to uh, ensure that whatever is happening in our societies, it should be based on, on common standards. And the legal framework to govern those standards doesn't yet exist? There is no legal framework at all. The developments in, in the field, well, technological developments uh, in any case go extremely fast. I mean, 25 years ago, uh, the internet uh, had just started. Uh, Facebook is only 15 years, not even 15 years old. Uh, and artificial intelligence, the way it's developing now, the, the, the most perhaps signific significant breakthrough in many people's minds was when uh, a machine was able to beat the world champion at Go because that was something that mathematicians had not uh, considered possible. Mm. When that proved possible by a self-learning machine, everyone realised this is going really, really fast. The late Steve Hawking warned uh, repeatedly, and he's not the only one, that if by 2025 we do not regulate AI, AI will regulate us. So let's talk about regulating then, mm. regulating AI. This is something that you say the Council of Europe is, is taking on board. Mm -hmm. Is it a realistic challenge? Can the Council of Europe rise to the challenge given the economic uh, power of mm. the interests that are out there actually driving these processes mm. forward? Mm. I think so. For a start, um, big tech's honeymoon is over. Um, for years, uh, the big companies, uh, in until very recently, the big companies enjoyed an almost unlimited uh, confidence because we all give them our data, right? Mm -hmm. And as you know, there's no such thing as free internet, so we pay with our data and everything. No one actually asked any questions. The election scandals we have seen, uh, the, uh, the hate speech, uh, the fact that, for instance, at a recent hearing in the US Congress, Twitter admitted that its algorithms had not been objective. All this had made people think and has made the legislators react. We now have legislation in Germany a takedown legislation, mm -hmm. uh, the big, uh, the big uh, internet service products must take content down. Uh, today, as we speak, this morning, there was an important vote in the uh, European Parliament next door on copyright, mm -hmm. again uh, imposing uh, conditions on, on tech companies. So regulation is coming and they're very aware that regulation will also be coming in AI. Uh, but what they want, of course, is to have uh, regulations they can anticipate and that will be common. The worst thing, of course, is that if several countries were to legislate on their own, there would be different le legal regimes. And that's where the Council of Europe comes in, because we work on common legal standards for the 47. 
But for instance, take an issue like cybercrime. We also have the United States, mm -hmm. we have Japan, Australia. We have, uh, nearly 60, we have 66 countries now with common standards, legal standards on cybercrime. Mm -hmm. Last year, we were, were active in 130. And that's what interests the companies. They have common legal standards, and that's why they're interested in working with us on AI. And the Council of Europe standards can and do often become global standards. They do become global standards on data protection, on cybercrime, uh, on, on a lot of internet matters, actually. The, there is no organization that has so many standards, so many policy recommendations, case law by the Court of Human Rights on the internet. Uh, no one else can match that. Is it all about protection and control or are there opportunities to be seized here as well for actively promoting human rights, democracy, the rule of law? Can you see, can you see both sides of the coin? When yes, but we would like ideally, of course, human rights by design. That is to say that certain ethical principles will be built in uh, the products that will be marketed. Uh, and it will be the challenge to, to, to ensure that, but also regulation. Can you give me a very simple example? Self-driving mm -hmm. cars. Mm -hmm. Self-driving cars uh, are, of course, on the road, not only in the US, but for instance, also in France, in Germany, uh, in uh, tested areas. It will not be long before self-driving cars start crossing borders. What about liability? Mm -hmm. What if something goes wrong? Mm -hmm. We saw what happened in Arizona. Who's responsible? These matters have to be sorted out, and the Council of Europe is ideally placed to establish the standards on these matters. And is that because of transfrontier cooperation or is that because of European standards then becoming global standards? How, what's the, the mechanism behind it? It's also the, the experience of the Council of Europe. Anyone who's dri who drives a car in Europe has to have a green card, an insurance card. Right. Very few people know that's based on the Council of Europe Convention. It enables you to drive a car throughout Europe. And the same will be true for self-driving cars. Enabling self-driving cars will be based on, on, on uh, deals, on agreements between states. And for the moment, the Council of Europe, as the pan-European organisation, is best placed to ensure that. And how is the Council of Europe set up in terms of actually getting this work done? Mm. How, is, how is the Council of Europe going to lead mm. the way mm. in this area? Awareness that we had to do, that the different, the different sectors of the Council of Europe, in the legal field, in the health field, in the social field, in the cultural field, uh, had to deal with artificial intelligence, uh, is not new. Uh, the Committee of Ministers already in March last year, and that was before uh, artificial intelligence hit the headlines, because that came actually later, already gave a specific mandate to a specific group of experts to come up with uh, legal standards on, on algorithms, for instance. Uh, in the health field, the, our colleagues working on bioethics, I've, I've been dealing with it, our cult uh, uh, colleagues dealing with cu in culture are dealing with it. The, what we now have to do is bring this all together. Uh, this is why the Secretary General has appointed me as the Internet Governance Coordinator, specifically dealing with artificial intelligence, uh, one chapter, one part. And in addition, um, we have at the moment uh, a, a process in the Council of Europe called the Helsingor Process, uh, named after the city where the last ministerial meeting took place, ministerial session took place. Uh, the Committee of Ministers has asked the, the Secretary General to present proposals for the Council of Europe's future mm -hmm. uh, next year on the occasion of the 70th anniversary of the Council of Europe and at the ministerial session mm -hmm. in Helsinki mm -hmm. where that will take place and uh, the Committee of Ministers has also asked for a specific part on technical developments, technological developments, and artificial intelligence will be a main part of that. And you have to now coordinate all of the various exactly. actions, bring them together. What do exactly. you see as your principal challenge? The principal challenge is that the Council of Europe has a lot of expertise but it's scattered. It's scattered uh, in different directorates, in different services, mm. and the challenge will now be to create groups of people working together, uh, bringing their expertise from their sectors, be it criminal law, be it health, be it culture, be it social affairs, social rights, uh, bring that together and to come up with, a common, with common products. And do you hope to have, a, have everything ready by uh, the Helsinki summit next year? We'll or? certainly have proposals ready, yes. I'm very confident. So Jan, let me ask you, are we actually able to keep up with the pace of developments in this field? Very good question. Um, I would hope uh, we, we can, but the challenges are enormous because the speed at which developments are taking place are enormous. Let me give you an example. Um, competing with human beings, making machines competing with human beings is not new. You probably remember the IBM computer. Uh, Gary that, Kasparov. That exactly, yeah. that beat Kasparov in chess. Yeah. Uh, well, that was easy, relatively speaking, uh, faced with some of the challenges of today. There's another game. Uh, it's often referred to as, a, as an Asian variety of chess. Uh, it's called Go. Uh, it's also played in Europe, by the way. There are national teams. But it's infinitely more complicated than chess. In fact, contrary to chess, it has infinite possibilities. There are, mo there are more possible moves in Go than there are atoms in the universe. 
So it is infinite. And because of that, no computer uh, could ever be, has until very recently, no one was able to program a computer uh, that could uh, beat a human being. Because human intuition, human experience, until a year and a half ago, always beat, uh, beat the machine. Right. However, uh, a machine was developed by a company now owned uh, uh, by Google. They bought it. Uh, and uh, it was able to beat the uh, reigning world champion, happened to be South Korean, in the game of Go. That was something mathematicians, because of these infinite possibilities, had not thought possible. And this machine was set up as a self-learning machine. Uh, but what is really quite fascinating, or worrying if you like, is that the engineers that programmed it uh, cannot rewrite the code, cannot reverse engineer it. They don't know, they know what the machine did, but they don't know how the machine did it. And this made a lot of people realize that it's perhaps really time to look at how we do things as regards artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.